Hey folks, Alan Mandic, not coming to you from Mandic Labs 2.0. Today we're coming to you from SEMA 2025. This video is still sponsored by Prusa Research and their studio is sponsored by PCBWay. For now, let's go check out what 3D printing there is at SEMA. For anybody who might not be familiar, SEMA is a automotive industry show. Custom automotive, automotive repair, this industry is gigantic, and this is the biggest show of the year, showing off cool cars, products, and innovations in the auto industry. I should definitely note that a lot of the technology we're gonna be talking about in this video is outside of a typical hobbyist sphere or attainability. I'm a nerd for the technology at play in 3D printing. I hope you are too, and that you'll be interested in seeing what might trickle into the tech we're using now. It wasn't that long ago, all 3D printers were inaccessible, so, this tech is expanding and improving all the time. Let's see what there is to see. Over here at Shining 3D, we've used their Einstar Ein scanners before, or Einscan Einstar. In a previous project, when I did my dad's GMC dashboard, I scanned with one of their scanners. They have the new Einstar 2 that has wireless connectivity. I would have loved to have had that on the previous model. No longer having to be tethered to the computer you're using during the scanning process. So I can wirelessly work around my shop. I can use my more powerful desktop computer. Don't have to have that much processing power, but it does make life easier when using the scanner. And it now has blue lasers capability. So you get some really accurate scans down to five microns on these parts. It's quick, it's easy, and you know, 3D scanning is improving just like 3D printing at a rapid pace. They also have the new Rigel. The Rigel is an all-in-one unit. This has its own built-in little tablet computer on the unit, so you don't need to have your laptop or your computer to do any of the scanning process, from getting the actual scan with the blue laser as well and the IR cameras, and right on up to generating your point cloud and your final mesh of your part. So you can offload that to your CAD software or direct to Slicer. I would say go to CAD software and clean up or re-engineer the part you're trying to create, but it gives you that option. For our level in the hobbyist space, that's really going to provide our, our most powerful options here. The Einstar 2, the Einstar Rocket, and the Rigel are interesting. I have to say that for me, the, the Einstar, the original one, was the easiest experience I've had with 3D scanning so far. It was still a new technical challenge for me to overcome, but I'm really impressed with what Shining 3D is able to create at this point, making things a little more entry level, a little more approachable and realistically compared to the significantly more expensive scanners you're not getting significantly less capability with these machines all weekend long when we've been talking 3d printing folks have been asking about 3d scanning whether they can just go from a scan to a printed part it can be done and these scanners are going to go a long way to getting that job done though reverse engineering and fully redesigning a complete clean part is still going to be your best bet there are some compelling options coming from Shining 3D now. Next up is a machine that I've seen in the past, but I've never really had as much time with it as I have this week, hands-on and checking it out. The Prusa HT90, Prusa Pro HT90, I should say. This is their high temperature machine, the 90, 90 degrees Celsius actively heated chamber on this thing. The machine comes with two different tool heads, a high flow one using E3D Revo high flow nozzles for your ABS, ASA, PLA, if for some reason you just need to run off prototype parts in a cheaper material, and a high temperature hot end. A pair of effectors can be swapped out pretty easily on the machine. The high temperature one uses the E3D Revo high temp version. That's a 500 degrees Celsius max temp hot end on this machine. The bed heater in here can reach 150 degrees Celsius. That means this machine is, yes, capable of printing PEI and PEAK. So your serious engineering grade materials are gonna handle higher temperatures, up to 200 degrees Celsius or more, as well as amazing strength and a significant weight reduction, even over aluminum. It's a beautiful touchscreen interface on the front of the machine, filament runout sensor and spool holder on the side for easy operability from the front of the machine. 
and it's a Delta 3D printer with CPAP cooling. So it's a lightweight vector. You don't have fans on the tool head adding weight in a hot chamber, though it does recirculate internal chamber air to still keep the chamber and your parts at the temperatures they need to be. With a high flow rate tool head, there's also a flapper valve in the ducts for the part cooling. That is to allow for more rapid airflow changes from the CPAP cooling fan. Now, CPAP fans aren't great at rapidly ramping up and down in airflow pressure Pressure. They're great at maintaining a really good static pressure though. So if you're hitting an overhang or a bridging section where you need more part cooling all of a sudden, CPAP can actually not be a great choice there because as it needs to ramp up, you might already be past the point where the cooling was needed by the time the air pressure actually increases. With that flapper valve, they can run the fan as it's meant to be at a good static pressure and use that flapper valve to quickly control the airflow to ramp it up and ramp down how much is coming out of the cooling ducts. And it's a seriously fast machine. It is a Delta after all. You've got three motors moving the tool head at any given point. Carbon fiber rods, linear rails on all three axes. This thing is an absolute beast. If you need to step up to engineering materials, this is your one-stop shop of the machine. Price point on this is right around $11,000. That's why you don't generally see it at your typical RepRap shows. But realistically, for a PEI capable machine, for a peak capable machine, that is really not a bad price point. And I think it's a gorgeous looking machine. It has a real serious sci-fi cyberpunk vibe, hint, 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 hint. Yeah, I, I don't need it, I don't need it, I don't need it. Would be an excellent ABS ASA printer though. Over here in the Ray's 3D booth, they have their new DF2 Plus resin 3D printer. This has been out for a few months now. I haven't had a chance to see it before. It's a bigger machine than I anticipated, and the wash and cure stations are industrial looking. But the star of the show for me is the new RMS220, a SLS. 3D printer. Super quick for anybody who's not familiar with what that means, it's a chamber filled with a fine powder of plastic dust. Laser sweeps over it, melting various areas, whatever your model dictates, building down your build volume, sweeping new powder over top, and melting that to the previous layer, just as with any 3D printing process. For the first machine that they are offering in this category, this thing has some interesting perks to it. Biggest that stood out to me right off the bat is the build volume of this thing. SLS printers, no matter how big they are themselves, are generally a rather small build volume, similar to older resin 3D printers. This is 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters by 350 on Z. So this thing is bigger than your classic Ender 3 FDM printer build volume, but SLS. So you could fill that volume with a bunch of little parts, one big part, whatever you need for small batch production, prototyping before injection molding, or final use products. There are a lot of companies like Bontech that use SLS in their manufacturing process for the final use product that you receive from them. They can run a machine like this in-house, not have to pay injection molding costs, and rapidly iterate on their designs and get a final product when they're ready. This unit has a 75 watt laser for really powerful burn capability, a 30,000 millimeter per second sweep speed on it, and a actively cooled chamber that can be removed from the machine at 100 degrees Celsius. This does have a 200 plus degrees Celsius chamber while actively printing. Those materials need to stay nice and warm so that they fuse well with the laser. When it can get down to that 100, that means you can swap it out for another build volume and get back to production more rapidly than other similar machines. For engineering shops, small batch production shops, this tech is fascinating, bringing manufacturing in-house. There is an add-on cleaning station that they highly, highly recommend with the machine. Between the machine and the cleaning station, you are looking at a $45,000 investment however, and there is a add-on blast cabinet coming soon to blast off with the fine little bits of plastic that might adhere just around the perimeter of your actual print. That's a standard thing in this type of 3D printing. So they're really building out a whole platform for their customers. I'm really curious to see how this machine gets adopted into the market at this price point. Yes, for those of us in the hobbyist space, this is multiple times, many times, what we would generally pay for a 3D printer. But in this market, figure bringing 
a mold for an injection molded part could easily cost as much as this machine and its cleaning unit and its blast cabinet. So if you can bring that in-house, start manufacturing parts, not be limited to just that one mold, start pumping things out that most folks won't even recognize as 3D printed, this is pretty powerful. What would you do if you had access to a machine like this? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Over here at the Form Labs booth, this is the first chance I've had to see the Form 4L in person, and it is a seriously big resin 3D printer. Like, look at that thing. Feel small next to it. This thing has a serious build volume of 353 millimeters by 196 on X and Y, and 350 on Z but it's also meant to be a seriously fast printer. They moved away from the laser system, as far as I'm aware, to a more traditional MSLA light array system with an active scraper to move back and forth and swish your resin into place. This is hitting, they claim, six hour full build volume prints. That's insane, a 350 millimeter part by 350 in six hours. Of course, being Form Labs, they have high quality engineering grade resins for their materials, and they are really controlling the ecosystem. Whether that's positive or negative to you is gonna be up to you, but the ability to control that ecosystem does mean that they can really dial in resins. So you're not printing calibration prints, you're printing production things. You can get to work with a machine like this. If you need to be printing big in resin, this is gonna get the job done. There is the smaller sibling, the Form 4, which I was less interested in, so I forgot to look up what the build volume on it was. It is this. Same technology, smaller footprint, smaller machine, lower price point. The build quality, the look of this machine, these things are just works of art in the engineering space. With wash station and cure station, the Form 4L is a beefy one coming in at right around $22,000, at least according to the website pricing. The Form 4, the smaller brother to it, is also with a wash and a cure station is more around $6,500. So much more approachable and a good way to get into the Form Lab system if you want to start printing with their materials, the high strength, the high temperature materials that they have available to you, or if you just need build volume to run large batches of production parts. I mean, think about production parts at that full build volume of six hours. You could do a lot of pieces and get a production really rolling forward. Oh, and they have the spring steel build plate on here for very fast print removal, which I'm envious of. That's so much easier than a scraper system. That's the Form Labs Form 4L. That's gonna do it for 3D printing at SEMA 2025. Really an underrepresented technology at this show in particular, where it has so many applications in this particular industry. I'm really glad Prusha and I were here to proselytize the power of printing to these folks. Thank you to Prusha for having me here at the booth, bringing me to SEMA 2025 and bringing you folks this video. If you're interested in getting into 3D printing, you're looking to expand your manufacturing capability, there's always options from the SLS, the MSLA, and the filament printers at much more affordable and cheap prices. Check out links in the description to all the products we talked about in this particular video. So if you're interested, you can find them there. Hope you found this video interesting, folks. If you did, drop it a like. Let me know in the comments what you think about the tech on display here and get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See ya, folks.